Hello people, how are we doing today? So we're going to work on our first painting tutorial for Asylum Wargaming and we're going to be working on a guild ball miniature. Now this guy's from the Brewers Guild, I can't remember his name. I looked it up before but I can't remember what it is. So we're going to start off with the base coat of Middlestone. Now I should have really said this at the beginning, we're going to be working on how to do a tartan effect. Now this is a bit weird and trust me this is the first time I've done it so this is my attempt if you don't like it, fair enough. If you've got any better examples, please put them in the links below. But we're going to start off with a middle stone from the Leo, one of the model air ranges, I believe. I can't remember exactly which one. But basically what we're going to do is just going to give this a base coat of middle stone, possibly do a couple of coats to get a nice even coverage. Okay, now we're going to come in with the next highlight, and this is Desert Yellow from the Game Air range. And what we're going to do is pretty much do the same, but we're going to leave the deepest recesses as middle stone. You won't see a massive change between these colours, but we kind of want that. We want a nice subtle blend between them just to start off with. This just gives a bit more, uh, a bit more vibrancy to it. Uh, I didn't actually go over it with two layers. It looks like I've just done this with uh, uh, Desert Yellow straight over the top. Either way, saves you some time because you can just go over it with the one coat. Okay, next what we're going to do is we're going to add some bone white to the desert yellow. Um, we're just going to highlight up and we're going to pick out some more of the raised ed edges. You just want the highest folds in the fabric here. You don't really want to do the rest of it. And uh, always, always keep your paints thin. If it's easier doing multiple thin layers, do that. You'll get a much better result, especially when it comes to fabrics and stuff like that. Thinner coats are much, much better because you get a nicer blend. Okay, and now we're coming in straight up with Bone White. Uh, just over the top on the very, very, just picking up the highest levels of the folds there. Again, this is thinned down so it should still blend as well. It's going to look a bit odd at first but trust me, there's a way we can fix this. Also as well, I'd highly recommend uh, doing pre-shading as well. It, it helps you see what's going on, what you're doing there, where the folds are. It just makes your life a bit easier and it also does a bit of shading for you as well. So highly recommend that if you've got the ability to do it. Okay, now what we're doing is we're giving this a very, very thin glaze of middle stone. So this is going to bring the very high, the very highest colours back down again and blend all of them together. Very, very, very easy, but you have to thin down your paint a lot. Now this is the tartan part, so we're going to start off with Vallejo Game Air Sick Green. What we're going to do is basically draw lines. This is a bit tricky. This is kind of like freehanding. But if you can just manage to get a line, you want this to be, I want to say, a thicker line than the red, which you'll see in a minute. Uh, there is a reason for that. So I would definitely suggest trying to do this on a piece of paper or something like that, gauge it first, just to see what kind of, uh, what size and length and width you want these lines to be. But what we're going to do is just do some parallel lines running down we want to kind of follow the curve of the fabric as well so with this guy his fabric doesn't go straight down so we want to kind of follow that curve around his really big belly
Okay, now we're going to do lines that go... I don't know the word for going across them, but basically we're just going to make squares out of it. So a bit like a Norse and Crosses sort of style grid over it, so... Oh, right, at right angles. I know there's a word for it, but it doesn't come to me right now. And as you can see there, you kind of want to space it out a bit more as it hits the larger areas of the fabric, space it out a little bit more. I think that's one of the key points here, is understand what the fabric will do and try and mimic what the lines would do there. Again, give it a test run on something like an old model or something and see what see what works for yourself. Next, we're going to come in with the layer of white. Now, this is the trickiest part. What you want to try and do is draw a white line down the middle of the green line. And this is possibly the trickiest part of this whole thing, is trying to draw that very thin white line down the middle of the green. This is why I said give it a test run first off, just to see how thick you've got to make the green line, just so you're able to actually draw that white line down the middle of them. So yeah, definitely give this a test run beforehand. Okay, so now we're going to come in with Vallejo Model Air Scarlet Red. Now what we're going to do is draw lines in between the green and white lines. Again, in this sort of noughts and crosses style thing. So you run a red line in between the green and the white. And then you run another intersecting line the other way between the green, the green and the white as well. So you're effectively creating squares and crosses within squares and crosses. I know that's not a very good explanation for a bit, but watch it, you'll get the idea. You'll also have noticed I didn't do the front bit um, beneath his belt. Uh, I did that off camera afterwards because I basically forgot. Oh no, I actually did catch up with it there. My mistake. Uh, yeah, so I'm catching up with myself there. So yeah, we all make mistakes. We all miss things. If you need to, just go back. Uh, also as well, if you find out you, you find your white lines are too big, if you can, just go back with the green and just try and make those green lines a bit thicker and 
keep on playing with it. You don't have to stick to a rule. You don't have to get it right first time. You can go back and clean it up as well. So don't worry too much about it. And there we have it. That is how we do tartan. It's a very simple technique. No, I don't think scientific it's not a pro painter standard it just is what it is so yeah don't be daunted by it i'm giving it a glaze here just there of um middle stone so yeah good tabletop standard there don't forget to go check out a silent wall gaming where you can go buy all your guild wall models thanks very much for watching and i'll catch you all in the next one Welcome to Asylum Wargaming. <laughs>